This is week 8 and it has come to the time to put your ideas and marketing strategies into writing. So in three files, you would be shown in a structured manner on the respective sections and subsections that you can develop for the group report to represent the portion for marketing plan. Now, why is a marketing plan important? Why is it important to put in writing your ideas and your marketing strategies? The reality is many of us are always very busy with many elements in our life. And sometimes we cannot be very focused or organized in what we intended to do. Hence, a plan is always good to remind us and keep us on track with what our goal is and how we should work to achieve those goals. Hence, no matter how good your product and your service are, it is important to write it down so that you have a careful and systematic research done that shows what kind of ideas and strategies may fit well in the whole customer journey to address the customer's pain and gain in your report. So by doing that, you will be able to know where your product stands in the market. Is your product competitive in terms of pricing, features, reaching out? This will help you to organize your activities that would better improve your effort to reach out and to deliver the intended value proposition. It also helps you to focus on past and future performance. So you have learned about the financial plan. You are encouraged to break it down uh, for the first year of the financial plan, the expenses that would incur on a monthly basis based on the activities and the resources that you have, right? You would have spent some money to gain the resources and from the resources, how you use it to deliver some activities, which will also incur expenses. For instance, the production, right? The production would use some key resources such as equipment, uh, labor. So it helps you to understand how your marketing expenses such as advertising promotion help you to generate more sales okay and of course ideally um, in your financial plan we advise you to show a incremental uh, sales volume but in reality sometimes um, the market uh, demand may be volatile uh, due to poor economic environment or sudden change uh, that impact the business, then the reality is the demand will go up and down. It will not be going up and up all the time. So this is why marketing plan allow you to look into your past performance to understand how far are you from your future performance that you have set as a goal and revisit on the advertising, the promotion strategies in the previous months to assess whether they have been effective in helping you to achieve your monthly or your quarterly target. Okay. So this is why it is very important to have a marketing plan. Now, in your marketing plan for the assignment, when you uh, write the sections that we will cover later in separate files, uh, you need to give statistics, numbers and sources on those uh, things that justify uh, your argument, your, your point in why certain things would be effective. 
So in marketing plan section 2.0, you would cover on value proposition, your customers, competitors, and other relevant stakeholders. So this will be the four main building blocks that you will cover in a marketing plan writing. Now you have already done a mock presentation in week four. That's when you try to identify what customer you would like to choose and serve. What are the channels that you think the customers are experiencing pain and you wish to better serve them in a different way. And you also identify in that customer journey map the kind of customer relationship that you wish to build with them. So this was the first step in week four mock presentation, right? And then we went on in week five to talk about the vision and the mission of your company. Because once you know the customers that you wish to serve uh, in week four, that in week five, you have a better idea on the kind of sustainability principles and value statement that guide your company, right? To achieve that vision and mission of coming up with competitive uh, experience or products for the customers. And this is followed by week six, where you present on the competitors and other relevant stakeholders. In week six, you develop the product features for your product that would give your product uh, some form of temporal and sustainable competitive advantage. You also use the positioning tool as well as competitor analysis to better know what features that you offer are unique, what features that you offer are common among the competitors. This exercise also allow you to decide on the pricing, right? Do you want to compete on a, a tough pricing uh, where you target the mass market? Or do you want to raise your pricing to a level where you think even at that high price, you would be in a strong competitive position? because of the product's uniqueness and value proposition. And of course, you also consider other stakeholders because in various business, there are different stakeholders that you cannot ignore. For instance, if you are in a business where there is a lot of regulations and approvals required, you need to fulfill the expectation and the requirement of those regulatory bodies. And some products may be very sensitive to the environment and hence there may be some activists that watch out on organizations that sell products that are harmful to the environment. So in this sense, if you are in this kind of category, you have to pay close attention to activists and perhaps work with the activists in a way that they would not pick your product or your company to, to, to publicize negatively. Uh, in the market. So basically, after going through all those pitches, you are already having some form of a plan, but you need to put it in writing, right? So in these three files, we teach you how to do it in a structured manner for the report. So from the empathy map, right, in 2.1 customer section, you need to show from your customer empathy map what have you understood from their experience what are the positive experience which is the gain that they appreciate and what are the negative experience or the pain that are still lingering that are not yet being addressed well or being addressed at all by your competitors so as i've said in week two those pains are the one that if you can address them, you would be able to differentiate yourself from your competitors. So from that empathy map, I'm sure in your past pitch presentation, you already know 
how you can better serve your customer. What are the value propositions that would attract your customer to switch to your product, to drop the product that they have been using or been loyal to. Okay, And from that customer journey map, you can also identify where are the pains. Okay, From that customer journey map, you would know if your product are important for customer to try out at the evaluation stage and you would be able to know whether your competitors do provide that um, trial in the shop or in some channels that they can better evaluate your product. So for instance, a coffee machine. An expensive coffee machine that is from 2000 to 4000 to 8000 ringgit, it is very hard for a person to commit to such machine without first trying it out uh, in the outlets. So it's very important for coffee machine sellers to have that machine physically displayed in some distribution channel and even have a personnel to be there to demonstrate to interested customer how to use the machine, how to achieve the best result because the coffee machines are not uh, very um, simple to use. There are timing issue, uh, there are amount of uh, coffee beans to be used. So there are a lot of small, small little things that you cannot expect a potential customer to buy a very good machine and already know how to use it. So for coffee machine, it is necessary to actually at the awareness stage, be physical in the shop, at the evaluation stage, be physical in the shop to demonstrate and even to let the customer try it out after your demonstration. So these are the areas that you have to consider. Where are the pains? Are your competitors selling things that don't give the customer a chance to try it out? Alright, so the pains and gains, right? When you think about empathy map, uh, it could be related to their poor experience in the customer journey. So you identify in which stage of the customer journey that they didn't have a good experience and you can try to add value to provide a better experience or a unique experience. So this is how you can develop a better customer relationship with your customer at the various stages of the customer journey map. And also lastly, identify the distribution channel that are suitable to communicate the product and to deliver the product to your customer. So all these you already have done in previous pitch presentation. So the next thing is you need to decide how you put it in words. Okay, so I'm just going through this, but basically 2.1, these are the things that you have to cover in writing. From 2.1, we break it down into subsections of 2.11, customer section specifically. Okay, so you need to answer what customer segment are you targeting? Who are your customers? Remember the persona, the profile that you develop, the age group, right? Uh, whether they are income level that is on the middle or low, or you are um, going for certain uh, family demographics, uh, who has kids with allergies. So this would be where you describe your customer. Um, and what kind of value what kind of value proposition that you intend to, to give them, right? And uh, for this, you may also need to uh, identify uh, the market size, okay? Where can you find these customers? So this slide is just a reminder on the uh, customer segment that you wish to serve. Uh, you have developed it already in your pitches. Uh, please consider the feedback of your tutors on how to improve them because the improved version, we expect the improved version to be in writing in the report. Again, as I've said, the empathy map helps you to understand the pain and the gains of your customer 
and to really understand if there are any needs that haven't been addressed well or even been addressed by your competitor. And this is where you can address their dissatisfaction and switch them from the use of existing product to your product. So basically, under the 2.1.2 section, needs and demand, it asks you to clearly spell out what problems are you trying to solve for your customers that your customer would think it is valuable to switch to your product. So the subsequent subsection will be 2.1.3 on market issues. Here you would cover on the key issues that affect the market, your market size uh, in percentage and in uh, ringgit value, and what is the projected growth rate for this market that you are targeting. So if you are targeting the middle income to the high income level family, uh, you have to estimate uh, year by year, right? How many percentage would this uh, market grow? Because that would indicate on um, whether your business is going to grow. If the market doesn't grow, the market stays stagnant. And if there are more and more people joining the market to compete with you, it becomes a very saturated, tough market to stay in. So you have to justify why the customer segment that you target is a good is a good segment for investment and business uh, by showing that this segment grows every year, and that means there are always enough pie or new portion for you and other competitors to. Target. So besides showing that the market segment that you target will grow and hence there are always opportunities to gain sales, uh, you also need to show why is this market segment attractive. Okay, uh, so one of the way to show why is through the pricing. What kind of price your customers are willing to pay? Uh, based on that item or based on that whole bundle of experience. Uh, from there, you'll be able to identify what is the margin that you can earn from each unit sold. You also need to consider the pricing of your competitors to understand whether your pricing is competitive, whether your price is competitive enough that a uh, customer will switch to your product. Now, when we say the price is competitive, we are not referring to price being the cheapest or the lowest, no. Because your price ideally should also include that whole user experience that are positive. So if people have positive user experience, even if the price is high, people will stay. So when you think about Apple, Apple computer, Apple handphone, obviously, uh, Apple is targeting a market that um, the price is quite premium and people even queue up to grab the products, right? So these products must be able to, must be giving a very positive, sophisticated experience that people are willing to pay that premium price. So that premium price is not only for the phone, but it's also for the apps that are specifically created uh, to deliver that unique experience to the user. So this is why I say uh, it's a price that is packaged together with other things. Like in some products uh, in, in uh, home appliance shops, they sell you a price which is only the product. But others, they also sell you a bundle pricing where that price includes longer warranty. And so if you were to buy the product, and the warranty separately, perhaps uh, when you add the two prices up, it could be more expensive. But there are some shops that actually do bundle pricing where there's one price that includes both, but the pricing will be way lower than if you were to buy them separately. So you need to understand uh, the pricing by doing uh, the competitor analysis, which you have done. So. Uh, don't always assume that price competitiveness refer to offering the cheapest price. From the Porter Spy Forces, you have done uh, under the customer bargaining power, 
you try to understand the switching cost. So in 2.1.5 section, you may write on what are the elements are related to customer switching purchase to a competitor. So you need to understand your competitors' products that may keep uh, the customer staying with them. Okay, uh, that you can also link back to the pains and gains that you have found in your analysis. So if those things are crucial enough that the customer will stay with a particular company, you may need to think how you can attract them and make them switch to your product. So what are the things in your value proposition in your customer journey map that you would be able to provide that wholesome, positive user experience that people think it's worth switching. So when you think about uh, Microsoft and Apple uh, for the computer, they work on different software, right? Different operating system. So how did Apple actually make people switch from a monopoly brand uh, by Microsoft to learn new techniques, new way of using a laptop, a Mac laptop, right? There must be some way that they are able to make people switch and unlearn the Microsoft way to relearn the Apple way. So we have mentioned that um, you as a startup, you do not have brand equity, right? You do not have a, a brand value where you can compete strongly with existing brand. So you may need to think about other ways that you can make customers to switch. So you can think about the bundle experience. You can think about uh, the better ways that you can address the pain. So these are some of the ways where you can help customer to switch to your brand. So when we think about uh, handphones, I, I talk about Huawei handphone where nowadays we use phone not only for communication, but it is also for an experience of taking capturing experience. So people become uh, more uh, demanding in terms of the quality of the uh, camera features, the video features that Huawei has already uh, worked with Leica uh, that is famous on high quality lenses. So this is how Huawei try to steal customers or make customers of its competitors switch to its phone, okay, with this kind of uh, features that are not uh, available in other mobile phone yet. Okay, so we come to channels. So you have already discussed, right, if you decide to use your own channel, it is a direct one where number one, you have your sales force, your marketing team to do the promotion, to do the awareness selling. You have uh, web sales, uh, whether you create a website for your own company or you use um, other platforms, website, for instance, Shopee, Lazada, and you also have your own stores. And the own stores could be uh, the store that is in, in, in your office, uh, that is also uh, where your factory is located, right? Or alternatively, uh, for the sales force, you may have it in um, Harvey Norman or in Guardians, in um, your partner's outlets where your uh, product can be better explained if the explanation is needed. So um, you can also have, uh, so that Guardian uh, Shopee platform, those are the indirect channels uh, that you work with uh, closely as partners. So section 2.1.6 on channels, uh, you try to identify which channel uh, best to reach out to your customer. Okay, remember we talk about um, the example of a supermarket, how the urban lifestyle, long working hours have changed uh, some Australians from uh, going to the supermarket, right? They change their uh, journey uh, going home. So they skip going to supermarket and that's how some supermarkets started to lose business. So supermarkets have to figure out what are the new uh, journey of customers and identify the touch point in the new journey that 
supermarket can still reach out to uh, working adults uh, with long hours of work. So in similar way, you need to identify which touch point are best to serve on what purpose, which touch point is good for awareness, uh, evaluation. So all these require different channels. You have to understand your customer segment, which channel is the best. So for instance, um, um, one of the team in my uh, tutorial were very creative to really understand the target market, uh, how they spend their time most of the time and choose a channel to a very cheap channel in fact to reach out to the customer so i i don't want to say in a very specific way because i want to protect their great ideas okay but basically uh, that team did very well in understanding how the their customers spend most of the time right uh, in the day and and what kind of touch point they're exposed to then only the company or the team, the tutorial team, uh, identify whether those touch points where the customer has the highest contact with are suitable to do advertisement. So uh, these are some of the things that you need to consider how to reach out to your customer to create awareness. And uh, what are the channels where you can um, get your customers to know the features better so i have used the coffee machine expensive coffee machine example and um, for those channels where it's third party indirect for instance harvey norman or singhing uh, you need to understand the distribution network uh, whether you want to display your product in all the outlets that would be expensive or if your target market is on the urban areas right then you need to only consider uh, your partners distribution channels in the urban areas so be very specific okay i think students commonly make mistakes by claiming that oh this partner has 400 outlets so that's how good you can reach out to your customer but then when you reflect it back on your customer segment that you target you're targeting urban uh, you're targeting urban cities, you're targeting people who work in urban areas, then you shouldn't be quoting 400 outlets because the 400 outlets could also be including outlets outside of urban areas. So be very careful when you choose statistics to report on. And so you need to understand that uh, your partners that you select, whether they have a single kind of a distribution channel or multiple types of distribution channel. If they have multiple types, then you also have to be very specific which type are you choosing. All right. So for Shopee, it's very simple. It is an online platform, online e-platform. And uh, when you think about the distribution and you work with GNT, if it's Shopee, uh, there are uh, GNT, there are DHL, and so. Customers who buy your product via Shopee would have a range of uh, choices, which um, you may not need to be concerned too much about whether the, 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 these partners deliver things on time because they are uh, controlled and managed closely by Shopee. And also you need to consider the channels is not only for creating awareness to allow evaluation by testing out the product. Uh, it is also important for after sales service. How do you want to continue to support your customers? So for instance, um, for my husband who bought coffee machine, he does once in a while go back to the uh, outlet to actually ask for further advice and to ask the personnel who uh, are a specialist in the machine to show him again how to do it and he demonstrate again so that the personnel can actually identify which steps of his are correct and can be further improved. So there are many things that you need to think about how you can engage with your customers in the journey that they go through. So about channels, it's not always that each channel will give you 
uh, customer data or customer feedback. And um, so it depends on the kind of customers that you partner with, whether they have all this infrastructure in place. So obviously Shopee as a platform, they do a lot of data analytics. They collect a lot of data from that online experience of customer. And uh, you need to find out if Shopee is willing to give you uh, a, a, a report on your uh, customer's transaction and whatnot to better understand your customer's behavior. Uh, and that's beside the reviews that you can see uh, publicly uh, on Shopee platform. So you may need to consider training costs. So if you are displaying your products in uh, physical outlets like uh, Singheng or Harvey Norman, and if your product is very complicating, you may need uh, to have your own personnel there, like the coffee machine example, or you may need to negotiate with Harvey Norman to have their staff trained to know your product well, so that when people inquire about your product, they can actually talk about the value proposition, the special features, and that experience that your company can give to your customer, right? So this needs training. So if, if it needs training of your partner staff to really know how to promote your product, then who is going to share the cost, the training cost, right? Now, how do you motivate channels to work well with you as a partner to promote your product? right that means creating awareness and to allow customers to to know your product better so that they can have a, a, a chance to do evaluation before arriving at purchasing decision so you need to create that win-win situation so nobody does things for free right so if you display something in Harvey Norman depending on products some products they expect 30 to 40 percent commission in return right for 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 that display, right, in their space, for their staff to know how to promote your product and for closing the sales. So different partners charge differently. Um, I understand like for instance, uh, Food Panda and Grab. Um, for Food Panda, in delivering your, 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 your orders, right, from restaurant to your customer. Uh, one of my uh, former students who is in business, um, we had a chat uh, because in lockdown, her business, which is in the brick and mortar environment, uh, is greatly affected. So I asked her why she did not consider Food Panda. She told me Food Panda actually, she has checked it out. So for delivering her, her, her product, right, which is food, uh, at least 40% of the selling price goes to Food Panda. So she felt that she worked very hard for that business, for that product, and she still have a lot of operating costs to cover. So why should she be giving 40% from the sales price to Food Panda just for being willing to deliver its product from restaurant to customer? So this is one reason why she have not engaged with Food Panda for food delivery. So you can see that for Food Panda in this example, it needs something back for delivering your product, for providing you the convenience that people can order your product online and be able to receive the product quicker, right? Because the Food Panda app helps things to be digitalized and making it more efficient. So in that sense that 40% is not just for the delivery service, but it's for that whole experience that would be positive to your potential customers. So nothing is free. So you have to give back something so that the partner is willing to work with you. So in 2.1.6, you need to mention what is the deal that you have with your partner. For this one, I will not explain in detail because already in previous slides, I keep touching on empathy maps, pain and gains, and relating it to customer journey map. So these are the areas and touch point where you need to understand at different stages, what touch point do you want to reach out to your customer? Would the touch point be physical outlets of your partners? Be e-platform such as Shopee? Um, so bear in mind, don't choose too many touch point. Uh, it will only complicate your report. We have advised you earlier uh, 
two would be more than enough. If you have three partners to sell your products, that will increase your operating costs. Because again, remember, win-win situation, you need to give back something to your partners. So 2.1.7 customer relationship, I've already explained that along that customer journey map uh, for the various stages, you can decide at what kind of touch point you want to build certain customer relationship. So if I take the example of coffee machine, right, the coffee machine is displayed in physical shop. So it helps to create awareness because people pass by, people see it, and there's a personnel there always stand by to explain the complexity of the product. So people get to know the product better than just passing by, uh, taking a look and chow because the product, in fact, has a lot of steps in how you can uh, make your own coffee. So, um, so you need to understand which touch point, whether it's in a physical outlet uh, like Harvey Norman, where they do have staff who learn how to explain the products, or you want to send your own personnel, your sales force, to be present there to do the demonstration, right? And then uh, you may also uh, train your sales personnel that you know it's not just when customer deciding to buy that you provide support. Uh, you can also train your personnel that, you know, for any customers that already bought the machine uh, of the sales service would be that you still attend to them. You still teach them how to better use the machine so that you can have a better experience uh, with making coffee and enjoying a uh, quality cup of coffee. So these are the things that you need to capture under 2.1.7. Uh, at which stage and what point, touch point you want to develop further customer relationship. So in previous slide, I already mentioned that even at the awareness stage, you can build customer relationship. So take the coffee machine as an example. If there's no sales personnel that is positioned there to show how to use the machine, right? it's very hard for people to know how good your brand is, how good is your product. Okay, so I'm not saying that every product must have a personnel to explain. For instance, some products are very simple, not as complicating as a coffee machine that is 2000, 4000 or 8000 worth in ringgit. Then you don't need a personnel to actually demonstrate it or you don't, yeah, you can rely on your third party or you can even uh, like if you think about IKEA, right? IKEA rarely have personnel in the shop floor. They have very detailed manual to explain to you how to build the product, right? So sometimes you need just clear instructions, right? Uh, for less complicating product. So you have to decide um, how do you want to establish your brand? The How do you want to create awareness that your product is good, right? Uh, given that you are still a startup. So you need to consider your costs, right, uh, so that you don't engage too many partners because some partners they don't go by the sales volume to charge you a fee. Some they would expect that this is a fixed fee regardless of how many items you sell. Okay, so um, one example that I can explain to you is Aeon. Uh, when Aeon first started in Malaysia, uh, it hasn't gained the confidence of uh, businesses to actually display their products under Aeon. So um, what Aeon initially, uh, uh, no, not Aeon, sorry. For example, um, one Utama, yeah, one Utama. So one Utama trying to gain um, um, customers to set up their shops there. So usually in shopping mall, you can see that it's very important to find the right uh, anchor customer. The anchor customer usually would be the one that is like Parkson, uh, Aeon. Uh, so this kind of uh, partner that would have occupied a few floors and very large uh, space in that shopping mall. So they, in, in, in business, we call them the anchor tenant, right? The tenants that is the main one. 
So what I understood is uh, one of the Tamil used to, uh, because when it first started out, it was trying to gain confidence of Aeon to be the anchor tenant. So it actually charged um, um, Aeon uh, on the uh, sales price. That means depending on how many units of, of uh, products you sell, they pick a small commission from there. And then per square feet of uh, renting fee, it was very low. Okay. Um, then I think a few years ago, uh, Wang Utama has changed the contract with Aeon. Uh, now they go by uh, per square foot price of the space, which is very, very um, high priced. Okay, they increase the price per square feet. And so when Aeon think about its operating cost, it's a different ball game already, right? Because it's not based on sales volume that they can sell, but it's based on uh, the higher price of square foot meter. So this is why you can see that Aeon, uh, at some point in time in Wanutama, they had renovation. They had renovation and they have occupied a smaller space now. Okay, uh, so this, this is an example of how um, the incentives given change over time uh, depending on whether one is weak or whether one is strong okay, in their business. Here I'll briefly go through. Um, so my key advice to you is make sure whatever channels you choose to advertise your product, to promote your product uh, during sales, you must make sure those selected channels are able to reach out to your customer. So you need to understand the customers very well. Who are your customers? Where can you find them? Okay? How do they prefer to be contacted or engaged? All right. And I think students tend to, from what I observe from consultation hours, students tend to opt for many partners, many platforms, many channels. Uh, we need to know there is a cost involved in every decision. Okay, I understand that some marketing students who major in marketing, what they learn is they can come up with very nice marketing plan without the need to concern about budget. But in reality, in reality, whatever we do, even for customer, uh, even for uh, CSR departments in big companies, when they want to spend money to do good, to the people and to increase uh, company reputation, they still have to come up with a um, business case. That means they have to justify for the amount of dollars spent, what positive impact it can bring to, custom, uh, to the company's reputation. So bear in mind, whatever plan, it involves costs. So be very careful in the channels you choose so that you would be uh, able to identify channels and how to do it that would best give you uh, the optimal positive outcome. So when I say to give the optimal positive outcome, right, it is not only in terms of increasing sales. It is also in terms of not blowing up your budget, not spending too much in marketing that you end up not making any profit okay so there must be some balance in that okay now in terms of a customer relationship after sales service uh, you may want to think if your product is very sophisticated customers uh, new users may not always get it right uh, think about using webinars right maybe for customers that buy from you you would collect their uh, correspondent details, including emails, uh, phone number, that you can later send them webinars to show them how to use it properly, right? You may also have a um, uh, contact point where customers can seek advice, can also give feedback, um, and also to get further consultation or support on how to better use the product. So these are some of the things that you uh, can think about for uh, after-sales service support. 
Of course, when you try to create awareness right in the customer journey, you may want to also think about uh, not only the regular brick and mortar, but uh, perhaps exhibition. So I'm not saying that all products need to have exhibition, needs to be in brick and mortar. Look at the customer segment that you are targeting. Uh, if your customer segment uh, that you are targeting, right, and the specific profile that you are targeting, they are very IT savvy, they tend to buy online, then perhaps using e-platforms will be the best way to reach out to them. So very important to understand your customer and how they prefer to uh, be reached. So again, here we talk about um, cost. Okay, don't come up with a very beautiful ideal marketing plan that will blow up your budget. Okay, because that would not encourage investors to pump in money to invest in your company, or that would actually raise concern for banks whether they should lend money to you. Okay, because when they lend money to you, it's a business, they want to make sure eventually you'll be able to clear your debts. So finally, on the sustainability concern, you may want to think about at which touch point uh, it is uh, good for the customer because it, it may uh, provide convenience to your customer that your customer can buy online, doesn't need to go to physical shop because the product is very simple. That would actually be good for reduction of carbon emission from uh, traveling, right? The use of petrol. Uh, you can also think about uh, after sales service, how you can support your customers uh, in a more efficient way that also address sustainability issue. For instance, uh, some customers may uh, want to buy another product from you. Uh, you may want to have some trade-in uh, promotion where you accept their used products and that used product will be recycled. So that is one way to demonstrate sustainability uh, after sales service, after sales. So file week 8.1, we have covered on the part one of marketing plan. Now we go to part two, which are the subsequent sections of the marketing plan write up. So section 2.2 on value proposition, uh, it is very important for you to know how to write uh, clearly uh, what is your value proposition? Okay, um, I'm sure you guys have done a mock presentation uh, in week four until now. Uh, you must have realized uh, certain things about your value proposition that you adjust along the way. So uh, we believe that uh, by the time you write your marketing plan, your value proposition uh, may have been an improved version because the more you, you you work on the pictures, the better you understand the whole exercise and you may go back to revisit previous pictures and consider um, feedback from tutors to improve the various parts before putting in writing as a business plan. So um, here uh, it is just a brief reminder on the kind of value proposition that you can put. Uh, just bear in mind that a lot of students tend to write a lot uh, but not clearly and not 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 clearly in less words and that would actually end up in um, exceeding the word count. So as I've said, uh, value proposition is developed from your understanding of your customer in terms of the gains and the pain, right? What they have enjoyed so far, which is the positive experience and what they are still frustrated, still not satisfied, which is the pain right with the existing product so from the empathy map you should be able to justify why your value proposition is as such so under 2.2 in general these are the things that you need to answer what is the value that you are proposing to your customer that may be appreciated by your customer okay it can be in pricing it can be in speed of service it can be how long lasting the battery is that give convenience so be very specific okay it can be um, about um, how the design allows mobility uh, that the product can be used anytime anywhere right so be very clear uh, how these features deliver value that can solve customer problem 
Okay, so uh, remember I always say that the, the, the pain are the ones that uh, the existing competitors product have yet to address. So those are the things that uh, would differentiate your product from competitors product if you were to address them well. So, um, like I say, in, in, in past semesters, uh, uh, the previous CE emphasized a lot on sustainability uh, in every part of the canvas. So for, for me, uh, as a CE, I feel that um, the emphasis on sustainability can be reduced because uh, our Malaysian market has not come to the level where they appreciate sustainability so much that they are willing to pay a higher price or they are willing to change their daily habits to be more environmentally friendly. So um, in that sense, when it comes to a value proposition, uh, you may briefly, likely touch on sustainability principles that drive the value you want to deliver to your customer. Okay, so you may want to talk about the positive impact in a very brief manner, uh, giving more space in writing to the value that you are trying to deliver to your customer to solve what specific problem. So section 2.3 is where you describe your products. So remember you form a table on competitor analysis, right? The part that is about your own product, uh, you can actually use that part to show what is your product features, what are the uniqueness that make your product stand out. Okay, so this will help you to uh, help reader, uh, help you to better tell the story of why your value proposition is unique. So for the VRIO model, please be very careful and honest in rating uh, the boxes to arrive in whether it is a uh, parallel or parity competitive advantage or sustainable competitive advantage or temporary. Okay, be very honest in this one. Um, and also, like I said, uh, all of you are doing this assignment as a startup company. So you would not have a strong presence in the Malaysian market and you will not have strong branding. So try not to put those in the VRIO model because it will only show how weak you are. Remember that you're trying to present all this to investors to get some funding. Okay, so you want to project in a very positive manner, then pick things that you are strong in to put in the VRIO model that can better reflect that you have some form of sustainable competitive advantage. So make sure when you put in this, you need to describe in writing. Don't just chuck in the table and assume that we know what you're trying to say. When you put in a table, a figure, you must have some writing to at least write briefly what is the concluding remark, what is the most important key message that you want to tell from the table. Okay? If you just chuck in the table without explaining, you will lose marks because you cannot explain, you cannot expect people to read your mind. Okay? Everything, every figure, table that put in, you must give what is the key message. Now we come to part three of the marketing plan in writing. In section 2.4 and subsection of 2.4.1, please make sure you put in a product comparison table, right? List two major competitors. So for my tutorial students, I allow them to list three if they want, okay? That would allow them to have a better comparison in terms of price features uh, that help them to better understand their positioning. So um, please follow what your tutors want. So here we expect uh, at least two major competitors is sufficient, okay? So make sure when you put in a table, you make key remarks on what does this means. Okay, you may want to talk about the strength 
of your product in comparison to your competitors. And for this table, right, for the results from this table, please also put in writing as a summary of what are the key things that investors should know when they read your report or what are the key things that a bank should know when they read your report. Okay, you may want to talk about um, the ratings that put your company in a better position. Uh, you may want to talk about which area that you are weak, but you believe over time, in what by, by what time, with what action, it can be overcome. So basically, you want to show that you are competitive as a startup in comparison to the existing competitor. So please remember, don't just chuck the table in, give some key concluding remarks that help people to understand the table's most important meaning. Similarly, in this positioning map, you may want to write a few sentences on who are your direct competitors that are closest to you and how you're positioning yourself in the market in comparison to your competitor. And that is to show that your business is viable. Your business can compete with the existing competitors. Section 2.4.4, you need to talk about the substitutes of the product. This you already covered in using the Porter's by Forces. So you may want to uh, talk about how these products may or may not give you threats, right? And again, the idea is you recognize their threats, but you would still be in a good position to compete as a new startup. This one, uh, you only need to write a few sentences to address whether this industry is easy to enter for new, new players. And uh, if they were to enter, would there be a lot of barriers and what are the barriers that they need to overcome? And also, um, to what extent uh, these new entrants may influence your customer segment? Would they give you a threat, right? Because in, in that industry, it's big. If there's a lot of uh, competitors that are entering into the market, but not specifically targeting your customer segment, then uh, you may not have uh, that high threat as uh, other customer segment. So 42.4.6, right? Just uh, make it simple. Uh, why is sustainability important for your market, for the customer segment that you are targeting? And uh, by addressing sustainability principles and values, how does that actually add value to your company and your product that makes you uh, positioning yourself in a better way as compared to uh, your competitors? So you may want to look into uh, this sustainability as something that is a long term uh, advantage to your company. Section 2.5 on other stakeholders, you may need to uh, list out who are the stakeholders that you cannot ignore? Would they be the governments, the government agencies where you need to get approval, permission, licensing, patents? So uh, think about that. But also there are some other stakeholders, for instance, the um, banks, right? Um, how do you better address uh, the expectation if they were to lend money to you? And also uh, some kind of um, NGOs that are very concerned about environment. So for this semester, for the four products, we don't really have um, products that clearly will harm the environment in a severe manner. So maybe let me think. Um, yeah, so maybe there is um, not a a dire need to engage with activists to co-create uh, the user experience or the product design. Okay, um, so maybe not from the sustainability perspective, but maybe you want to co-create from the uh, product competitiveness and uniqueness perspective by working together with customers. Okay, but not not under this section. So this is what I mentioned whether you need to create value for uh, some NGOs or not. Uh, that may not be your customer, but um, by creating value for them, maybe they will not pick your product to uh, portray negatively in the public. Uh, so usually products that get attacked in this way are 
uh, products that are harmful to the environment. Um, yeah.